Good morning, guys. It's Michael, teacher turned trucker. Today we're going to finish up chapter 18, uh, verses 33 to 40. And there's quite a bit going on. I'm going to see if I can keep it all together as I go through it. Uh, so there may be times where I kind of step over myself because I remember something. Um, when I first read through this, uh, a lot of just what I knew and had remembered kind of um, permeated to the surface. Um, but as I read through some commentaries, <clears throat> there's some nuances in the, the original Greek text that I had not picked up on, and that's easy to overlook in the English. So we'll kind of get into that a little bit. So in 33, so Pilate went back into the governor's residence, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Uh, let's remember the background that this is being set with. Uh, the reason, uh, as far as what was told Pilate, the reason that Jesus is being brought to him is because the Jews are accusing him of sedition. They're accusing him of causing an uh, uprising that is tantamount to overthrowing the, the Roman Empire <coughs> or the Roman rule there in Jerusalem. That's what they're accusing him of. Uh, so are you the king of the Jews? In 34, Jesus replied, are you saying this on your own initiative? Or have others told you about me? This does not translate perfectly or real well in the English. This is one of those things that I did not pick up on. Essentially what Jesus is saying here. Are you asking me this because you have seen within me something that leads you to think that I'm being seditious? Or are you only saying it because others have accused me of it? This distinction and this clarification is important because Jesus is basically shifting the focus away from the religious leaders in one element and putting it back on Pilate. Pilate's not going to get out of this with his hands clean as much as he wants to. He's going to have to make a decision. And at this point, the next verse um, clarifies it. Um, Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own people and your chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? So in this verse, Pilate makes it clear that he's not asking Jesus this question because he has seen something in him. He's asking because the, the religious leaders have accused him. So Pilate has abdicated his responsibility of being neutral. And he's essentially um, acknowledging whether he recognizes it or not that he's rubber stamping what the religious leaders want because he's afraid of them. He's afraid of the uproar that they would cause if he doesn't go along with them. And we're going to see this later in the chapter um, where this is reaff reaffirmed. So the verse 36 is um, important. Jesus replied, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my servants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish authorities. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. This is Jesus essentially saying, yes, I'm a king. Okay, um, but he doesn't stop there. He draws a clarification that is enough for Pilate to know that Jesus is not a problem. And we'll see that a little later. Um, Jesus is stating, yes, I'm a king, but I'm not a king of earthly means or earthly focus. His kingdom is spiritual. We would, we would clarify it as spiritual or divine. One commentator said, so his kingdom does not run contrary to the Roman Empire. They're not in competition. Uh, and that's an important distinction, <clears throat> excuse me, because the whole accusation put against Jesus is that he's causing sedition trying to overthrow the Roman rule. Well, if Roman rule is not a competitor with Jesus' system or Jesus' kingdom, then there's no problem, okay? Um, <clears throat> verse 37 is an important um, verse. Then Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus replied, you say that I am a king. For this reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. That phrase, you say that I am a king. Um, it doesn't come clear, as clear as it did in the old King James, thou sayest. This was recognized as an affirmative. This was Jesus saying, yes, I'm a king. Um, but this Jesus goes on 
to explain even further. And this is the main divide between the two kingdoms, the earthly kingdom and the spiritual kingdom. Um, for this reason, he was born. He was born to be a king. He, he was born. He came into this world to testify to the truth. That phrase is important because that's what this whole verse is about in this whole section. This, in a nutshell, captures what Jesus' uh, kingdom is about. Uh, Jesus' kingdom is about shining light or shining truth where there's darkness, where there's ignorance. So, the only, because the only way into Jesus' kingdom is to hear, receive, and believe the truth of the gospel. The truth of who Jesus is. Those are, that's the only way. Um, you can't go at it with man's philosophy. You can't rationalize your way there. Uh, you can't work hard to get there. It is truth that leads into the kingdom. Um, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Everyone who is a believer, everyone who is a member of his kingdom, hears his voice. So, by extension, those who don't hear his voice, it's because they're not of his kingdom. Okay, let me take a look at my notes because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, verse 38. Uh, I like this one quite a bit and uh, I can almost, in my mind, picture this. Pilate asked, what is truth? When he had said this, he went back outside to the Jewish leaders and announced, I find no basis for an accusation against him. But I want to go back to the phrase, what is, or the question, what is truth? There's speculation from different commentaries, even the ones I read. Uh, this was him, uh, Pilate, being snarky. This was him mocking Jesus. Uh, this was him being flippant. Uh, the one thing they all seemed to have in common was there was this belief in searching for truth going through the Greek kingdoms uh, or cultures at this time. So there could have been some legitimacy in the question, but we know the heart of Pilate um, because we don't see Jesus' answer. Uh, if Pilate were sincerely asking this question, you can make no mistake, Jesus would have recorded his answer in Scripture. I don't say this to put words in Jesus' mouth, but if Jesus, as he just said, uh, is all about setting up a kingdom that is proclaiming truth, if there's an occasion for someone to receive truth, Jesus was going to give it. Uh, he does not withhold truth from those who are truly seeking. Okay? So... Um, when he had said this, he went back outside of the Jewish leaders and announced, I find no basis for an accusation against him. So, at this point, Pilate has acknowledged that Jesus is innocent. Okay, Jesus is not guilty of sedition in the manner that the Jewish leaders had accused him and wanted him put to death for. So, again, I know there's people at times, I mean, I, I myself at times, what was Pilate's big deal? Uh, why is he guilty? Well, he's guilty because a couple of occasions throughout this process, he's had to make a judgment call, uh, and ultimately the ability to put Jesus to death rests on him. So, he has to be seen as complicit in the death of Christ. He's not simply... Uh, going along for the ride, even though actually he is, but it brings guilt upon him. Um, verse 39, but it is your custom uh, that I release one prisoner for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Okay, so I did a little bit of reading. There's some different perspectives on where this custom originated of releasing someone. Um, but even one of the commentators said that a lot of work's been done on this particular issue, but no one really knows. So we'll just kind of leave that one there. The focal point then shifts to verse 40. Then they shouted back, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. This uh, particular translation does not provide a lot of um, uh, explanation about who Barabbas was other than saying he was a revolutionary. Um, other resources have indicated that Barabbas was a leader 
of um, robbers that he um, plundered and that he shed blood. So he was not a good person. So to wrap this up, um, this, this heaps more shame, more um, guilt upon the Jewish leaders, upon Pilate, that they would choose to, re to release someone who had shed innocent blood uh, instead of releasing an innocent man. So the irony or the twist cannot be understated. Um, how often do we choose the path of least resistance? This is where we're aiming. Pilate had a choice. He knew Jesus to be innocent, but because he wanted to go with the path that um, caused him the least amount of problems, he was willing to be complicit in the death of Christ. Knowing that, man, that Jesus was innocent and knowing the person that it was being asked to be released was guilty of shedding blood, of causing um, mayhem, um, he put his own preferences and comfort ab above others. So again, this is where we have to evaluate. When occasions come into our lives and we know the right decision, do we choose the decision that is right or do we choose the decision that is easiest? Because oftentimes you will find they're not the same, they're actually the opposite. Um, so this is what I would encourage each of us, uh, especially when we have big decisions in life, um, evaluate the cost, evaluate what is it that's moving me in the direction that I'm going. Is it because it's easier? Is it because it makes me more comfortable? Uh, I know myself, when it comes to those big decisions, usually I find myself steering towards the ones that are more difficult um, by default. Um, and I, I don't really know why, I just find that God tends to open doors uh, when we uh, do so. Because in those circumstances, we find ourselves, if, if, you're, if you're searching and seeking Christ's direction, those are the times where He will manifest Himself. He will uh, open doors if it's uh, the direction He wants you to go. He'll close them if it's not. And that's where you can really evaluate and see if you're in it to be in control or you're in it to be obedient. Uh, Christ wants us to be obedient. Uh, it's not about being in control. So again, this one's going a little long. Uh, we'll wrap it up here. Next time we'll start with John chapter 19. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the boxes below. Uh, love to hear from other people. Uh, again, this is Michael, Teacher Turn Trucker, and you guys have a great one. God bless you.